This is the fifth progress report on the F-14 program, and I am Rear Admiral Swoosh Sneed, the Navy's F-14 project manager. While this film covers events from January through September of this year, one of the big stories is taking place right here at the Naval Air Station at Miramar, California. The first two fleet F-14A fighter squadrons, VF-1 and VF-2, have begun independent squadron operation. At the same time, Readiness Squadron VF-124 is utilizing aircraft at about double its projected rate, getting twice as many flight hours per aircraft than expected for this time in the program. And all training flights are with full up weapon systems. A total of 13 aircraft have been delivered to the three squadrons here at Miramar, and delivery rates are accelerating. More and more air crews are being checked out in the Navy's newest weapon system. Not all the training is being done in the air. Miramar is now the most advanced fighter training base in the world, and a good part of the credit for that title must go to one of the most advanced ground and maintenance training programs ever devised. In a specially constructed academic section, Air crews are being trained with the most modern equipment. In addition to classrooms, there are self-study corrals where individuals can review audio-visual programs at their best learning tempo. Training is being enriched with color videotape cartridges covering a range of subjects from a general overview of the weapon systems to the specifics of in-flight refueling. Operational flight trainers, full-scale cockpits that never leave the ground, provide dynamic realism for both members of the flight crew. Four of these operational flight trainers have been ordered by the Navy. In the first of these, delivered ahead of schedule, the pilot maneuvers through an electronically generated sky, practicing and repeating the skills required for a high-performance swing-wing fighter. Three more will be ready for training by July of next year. In the missile control operational trainer, the naval flight officer reads simulated radar inputs and exercises the capability of the F-14 weapon system tracking simulated targets and launching simulated missiles. Maintenance training is an inadequate phrase to describe the variety of that hone skills already sharpened by experience. Crew escape systems. They have to work only once, but they have to be ready all the time. These men are learning to ensure that capability on the cockpit escape system trainer. 13 different F-14 Naval Air Maintenance trainers are in place at Miramar. Engines and engines accessories hands-on training complements classroom theory. Taking it out of the airplane is one thing, tuning it for maximum performance is another. The logic of the fuel system is observed in the maintenance trainer where the flow is visible and the valves and controls readily accessible for observation and adjustment. Flight controls, a matter of microsecond discipline on the part of electrical, hydraulic, and pneumatic components can be a study unto itself. The flight control system simulator, an iron bird that never flies, gives technical insight to the interaction of all the elements. Specially trained instructors are on hand throughout, leading, teaching, and available to answer questions. The F-14 armament system comes in for its own share of attention. The total elements that go into the Phoenix missile are part of the curriculum for those who are charged with the AUG-9 system maintenance. Hands-on training plays a big part here as shown by one of six Phoenix missiles being hoisted onto an F-14 weapons rack. 
if, as the old saying goes, training makes the difference, then here indeed is training with a difference. No system is left untouched. And the sum of these systems, the airplane itself, is also providing training. Readiness Squadron VF-124 has 13 flying classrooms for air crew transitioning. While training is in full swing, there are Board of Inspection and Survey weapons trials scheduled for October completion. The Joint Evaluation Team, referred to as the JET, is comprised of the Naval Air Test Center at Patuxent River, Maryland, VX-4, and the Naval Missile Center at Point Magoo, California. This JET team is responsible for the on-time completion of these tests using four aircraft from Patuxent River and three at Point Magoo. Between June and August of this year, the JET team conducted 11 missile firings, including two live AIM-7 Echoes, a dual Phoenix air launch, a double Sidewinder air launch, and a Phoenix air launch against a cruise missile. All firings were successful. The F-14's gun has been fired from Mach 1,000 feet, through 6Gs at 7,000 feet, and at 130 knots at 20,000 feet. A heads-up display camera recorded tracers being fired at a 30-foot long towed fiberglass target using direct windshield projection and a Grumman-developed real-time gun solution system. Tracers comprised one in every three rounds. Film speed is half normal time. Last December, five drone targets simulating MiG fighter aircraft were detected and tracked by an F-14A flying at Mach 0 0.7 at 31,500 feet. The AUG-9 system rapidly evaluated the five and selected the four with the greatest threat potential. Four Phoenix missiles were fired in rapid sequence. All four destroyed their targets. In June of 1973, in a severe look-down, shoot-down test, a Phoenix missile with a live warhead was launched at a QT-33 target drone. The drone, flying 2,500 feet above the Naval Weapons Center range at China Lake, California, was destroyed. The F-14A was traveling at a speed of Mach 0.8 at 4,500 feet altitude. The range at time of missile launch was 11 nautical miles. With a total of 20 missile firings, 17 have been successful, one was a no test, for a success rate of 89.5%. The F-14A production continues on schedule in Bethpage, New York. The forward and mid-module of number 61 has been assembled and is ready for shipment to Calverton. And aircraft number 79 is in sub-assembly. At Calverton, Tomcat activity continues at a rapid pace with numbers 40 through 60 in various stages of final assembly. In addition, Aircraft numbers 36 through 39 are completed and in preparation for Navy cell. With aircraft now coming off the production line at a rate of four per month, the plan is to increase production to five per month by the end of the year. All major structural tests ended with completion of carrier suitability drop tests to as high as 26 feet per second at landing weights approaching 52,000 pounds. In late August, the fatigue article passed another milestone on the ground by achieving 6,000 equivalent flight hours or one times aircraft life on the wing, fuselage, and tail assemblies. At fighter configuration, this is equivalent to two times aircraft life or 12,000 equivalent flight hours.
Aircraft number seven, the first F-14B equipped with two Pratt & Whitney F-401 advanced technology engines of 28,000 pounds thrust each was rolled out of its Calverton, New York hangar for engine run-up and taxi test. No external changes were required to fit the F-401s into the basic F-14A airframe. The advanced technology engine had undergone a total of 19 hours of ground tests at the Calverton facility prior to installation. This month, number seven began its flight test program with Grumman F-14 project pilot Joe Burke in the front seat. The first in this series of flight tests evaluated airframe power plant compatibility. The aircraft achieved a maximum speed of Mach 0.9 and a maximum altitude of 35,000 feet. Just completing the expansion of the entire F-14 structural envelope is aircraft number three. To date, number three has cleared the six and one half G fighter envelope and has consistently flown to seven and one half Gs in the fighter configuration. At one point, number three attained 8.9 Gs within limit loads. Aircraft number two has gone from plus 90 to minus 50 degrees angle of attack at all external loads, wing sweeps, and center of gravity locations without a stall or departure. At a maximum angle of attack of minus 50 degrees, air speeds as low as 60 knots were obtained at full forward stick applied at a moderate rate. Engine operation was excellent. While a French newspaper was calling the F-14 the pearl of the Paris air show, spectators at the highly acclaimed international event were calling the Tomcat's performance nothing short of spectacular. Commander Jim Taylor and Lieutenant Kurt Strauss put production airplane number 22 through its paces during the air show. After additional performances in England and Spain, the crew flew nine hours nonstop from Madrid to Patuxent River, Maryland, using in-flight refueling before returning to Miramar, California. In July, another event with an international flavor occurred at Andrews Air Force Base near Washington, D.C. Grumman test pilot demonstrated some of the F-14's low altitude capabilities for His Royal Imperial Highness, the Shah of Iran. Included in this demonstration, for a one-half Cuban aid on takeoff. A knife edge pass. Here he's pulling seven and a half G's at 400 knots. This low speed pass is at 95 knots. A touch and go at 100 knots, then climbing to 1,000 feet. This landing will be less than 2,000 feet of ground roll.
The Shah then had an opportunity to have a closer look at production aircraft number 22. This year has seen the attainment of the goals that were set for this time period. Of the 5,000 hours total flight time on the F-14s, 20%, or 1,000 hours, has been dedicated to formal Navy evaluation, with another 1,000 hours accumulated by Navy crews. There are 33 aircraft in flight status. The first two fighter squadrons are operating independently and in January will achieve total Navy support. The flight crews are transitioning into the new weapon system smoothly and on time. Maintenance training is preparing those who will support the aircraft in the fleet. The next step will be deployment.